Network on Saturday, May 28th. And I'd like to welcome everybody who's uh, joining us today, and especially Kim, who will be channeling for us. Uh, I want to start by uh, wishing one of our members, Sheldon, a happy birthday. And I'd like to note a personal thanks to Guru Dan for patiently showing me all the niggly details that uh, go on behind setting up one of these webinars. Um, let's see, uh, Val, you want to introduce the uh, participants today? Sure, thank you, Mark. Today we have in the room with us Angela, Christine, Michelle, Sam, Shron, Will, myself, and of course Kim is doing our channeling today. Good morning, Kim. That's better. You'll hear me now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Once again, I am here with the pleasure of doing the webinar. Jim, uh, we love you. I've always got to say that. Uh, thank you, Mark, for stepping up in the way that you have and giving Dan the time out. You're wonderful. I love you. Valerie, as always, you're amazing. Thank you so much for your support. And everybody here, mwah, big love to you the here now and those who will watch later. Okay, uh, today, yes, there will be time for questions. Um, probably not colony ones, uh, likely to be, uh, well, you'll know when the bean comes through anyway, you're familiar. I think we might have two today, um, but let's just see how it rolls and how the questions roll. Um, so, yes. I shall go now. Is the, do you guys want to make any announcements for the hot springs or will since you're here? Did you want to say something or anything like that? Just my mic. Or? Yes. yes, it is. Oh, nice, nice. Well, there's three weeks left until Beyond Belief in Hot Springs from June 18th to June 22nd. We have lots of activities planned. And if you're still on the fence, hope you decide. It's going to be an awesome event. We're going to do solstice activities. Jim's going to do the channeling from Hot Springs on Saturday morning, Saturday morning webinar. It will be an amazing event. Hope everyone can make it. Thank hey, Will, you, do you Will. want to take a second to talk about some of the new events that are being planned that are not yet on the Reiki with Will page? Their spirit is still redesigning the schedule as we speak. Um, and I'm going to uh, Enchanted Rock today to uh, connect in and uh, renegotiate what we're going to uh, talk about. Wonderful. Well, I actually uh, have been busy with sessions. Um, I'm encouraging more people uh, to come for sessions at the moment because I have a specific goal in mind and um, the more that I may offer you in exchange of service would be just wonderful at the moment. Um, in saying that you can find me, um, my links are underneath this little box here that we're all sitting in um, and I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, so I shall go for now, um, enjoy, uh, and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Thank you, Kim. <clears throat> Blessings. Hello, everybody. This is Andrew. Welcome, Andrew. Hello, Mark. Welcome to you, my friend. Thank you. 
What would you like to share with us today? Well, I'd like to start out by just simply making it known that today my deliverance is actually a collaboration. I've worked very closely with the wonderful Alma Talk and it was decided that it was best that I come in to address this subject. Now, <laughs> it's a wonderful subject. Seduction is the intention of conception. There is a whole new wave of lovely little beings in spirit full of innocence. It's their time to come. They're going to come, you will notice on your planet, Mothers and fathers will become younger for a short time. You will notice that there will be prolific pregnancies. You will also notice that these children are going to come through particularly healthy and untouched by other diseases that are rampant on your planet. They will have a touch more resilience. They are the ones that will also bring major breakthroughs in some of your sciences, such as DNA, much will be learned with this particular wave of spirit that is coming in. Now I'm going to share with you the idea behind this is what is happening on some of the major continents on the planet at the moment. This is how it all works. As the planet planetary movement reaches the heights desired by the space-time continuum in relationship to the multiverse, in relationship to the other three-dimensional planets, fourth and fifth, and also those of us that are hovering around your planet at the moment watching over you. It is timely. So as you see this wave of pregnancies, there are several things that I would like to address. One thing is, if you are one that is bearing a child, please be comfortable with the idea of people touching your pregnant, what the ladies call, belly. You have a being in there. You have a being in there that is hungry for interaction. These children are going to be highly telepathic, they are going to be very sensitive, they are going to be, as you would say, sponges to all of life around them. Now, we want to introduce them to being tactile beings as early as possible. So mothers-to-be who perhaps will hear this, please become comfortable with exposing your pregnancy, exposing the radiance of being pregnant and that you are bringing in a spirit that has a purpose of love. Now, touch. Of course you are aware, your children hear, your children feel, your children do far more than that while they are in the womb. They are building their futures. They are understanding their parents. They are understanding the world around them. This particular way will be able to be born very early with high survival rates. There is a rush. There is a sense of this is the now. There will be many who thought perhaps they were unable to become pregnant and will. There will be others that it will seem like what you call intervention from God because you fell pregnant so easily. Now these are the kinds of beings that you are going to be blessed with bringing in onto the planet. Now as far as the conception <laughs> of course, you are all aware of the wisdoms behind this, the wisdom behind requesting the kind of child you would like to bring into the world, the wisdom behind understanding 
this will be one of your spirit group and that you will have a deep connection with this being that you deliver. This is your deliverance. Yes, go ahead. As you come to copulate, have your romantic meals prior. Move into the space, the heart space together. Enhance yourselves with music, with light, with pleasure. My all being told. You are all aware. The perfect environment with the intention to conceive with love. Yes. But there is a word equal to love that it is just as essential and magical and it is a word that is not often used in the spiritual realm. It is also, also almost a taboo and it is sad and I'm going to blow this away for you in this moment. When you procreate and you have your heart in the space of love, the rest can fall away. The power of passion, the passion, embrace each other with passion and pleasure. Now, if you want to be prepared for effective procreation, I would say to you, absolutely understand what it is that takes your partner to the heights of pleasure. Know each other's bodies. Know each other's love. Know each other's love language. And don't be afraid to be passionate. Do not fear the intensity of sexuality. Sexuality. Seduction can be something <laughs> quite exciting. Be excited. Embrace each other. Enter each other. Copulate with passion. This is absolutely appropriate for the beings who are also the wave that will come. These children will be also born with a passion. A passion for the journey. A passion for being here. A passion for what is to come. A passion for growth and ascension. So please conceive them in this way. The only key being that you understand the bodies of each other, pleasure of each other, share that pleasure with that child. You may copulate several times while you are pregnant. Enjoy. Enjoy. Pleasure. Explore. Yes. There is a child there experiencing all of this pleasure right with you. And what you are doing is creating a being that is going to come into this planet and understand pleasure as well. Heights of passion. They are a great gift of humanity. Passions that drive you. May I share one of the catchphrases of a colleague the passion of holy fire. Yes. So, in the spirit of the way that is to come, please go ahead, if you choose, and procreate with all the ideas spiritually that you resonate with to bring this child into being. If you don't, Please, let your passion drive you. Be all that you are. Love and bring pleasure to each other. And take each other to hope that your child will also. So this wave that is coming in is going to bring things to this planet that you have yet to see. 
in your own lifetimes. And it will be something to show you. For well, as you leave this planet, I wish for every single one of you to have understood what is true passion. What is true pleasure. This is life as a human. This is living as a human. Care enough to be passionate. That is my message. Okay. Is there any questions? Yes, we do have a question right now. Christine, would you like to go first? Yeah, I was wondering, um, in the U.S., they're passing all sorts of laws that infants and um, children have to have all these vaccinations, which mm -hmm. we know have poisons in them. Um, will they still be required to... Is there a way that um, parents can opt out of the... Uh, out of the the shots? Mm, yes. Yes, of course there is. Of course there is. You must give consent. This is always the case. The trick is to find the loophole in the law. Very often it is simply an illusion that is presented to you that you must go ahead and medically affect your children in this way. Look for the loophole. There will be one. No government on your planet at this moment is able to legally enforce you into bringing your child to have vaccinations and traumatize them with and their bodies with these kinds of diseases. No, look for the loopholes, my friend. Every single country has one. If you do not want to vaccinate your children, you will find some countries will do things such as offer you monetary exchange. Why? Because of your pharmaceutical companies that create these situations and these belief systems and effectively they do run your governments. You all have the belief system that your governments run your countries in truth, your pharmaceutical countries do. Your pharmaceutical businesses do. They may as well be gold countries. So look for the loopholes, my friends. How can um, people like, um, I think through our media we're being shown that the people from the South or the what were called the Confederate States, which seem to be, because of the media, to be illiterate. Um, how are these people, how can they be um, shown that their children are special or um, how can they be shown this when they're, I, I mean, how can, <laughs> I'd like to see a lot of people know that their children are special. Yes, of course. Of course. When this wave comes through, those that are parenting this child are going to notice that they do have exceptional connections. That the pregnancy itself is going to be exceptional. It will be unique in its own way. There will be something about this process, this gestational period even. It is going to become shorter. Not dangerously short, but there will be those that it will be a miracle that they survive because they were birthed so early because they needed to be. Now, as far as educating people, my friends, it is as with any information on your planet. Informed consent or informed disconsent can only be made by those who have been informed. This too is also how you may approach the organisation, the hospital, your place of care where you inoculate your children. My friends, and ask questions. Ask questions. Ask your questions of your doctors who have children. Have they inoculated their own children? 
you will be fascinated with the answers. But as far as educating your population as a whole, this is a challenge, of course. This is not something that we can spread as a message to each individual and have the attachment to the outcome that it will be essentially heard by all. The seeds have been sown generations before. Yes, this is why you come to me and thank Christine with the question. We are having a conversation now. This will lead to independent choice for some children who will come in. Others will come and make a similar deliverance to other populace. But there is no guarantee that the free will of the individuals will be led to information to assist them in making these kinds of decisions. What I'm worried about are, are women who are raped or um, yes. coerced. What's going to happen to these children? Are they also going to come in um, with this opening? Yes. They will come in in this way, yes. They will be far less distressed. The mothers are going to find the children will be far less distressed. They will be far less affected by the idea of having been the product of a rape. Essentially, that is a label that as a parent, we would say to you, please avoid. The mother can say you were wanted because she chose not to terminate the pregnancy. It can only take simply one parent to parent effectively and fulfill that child's needs. It does not mean that there needs to be any form of lying that goes on around this child. But you can also express to this child how special it is because you chose to hold on to it. Now, the idea of termination and abortion in these situations, of course, it is a free will individual choice. There are those who will choose to hold on to their child and those who will simply choose to allow this spirit to move on. Now, I want to also share this with you and this also happens in miscarriages. When the child is actually being conceived, reaching the age where it may be actually perceivable that you could be pregnant, the child, if it is not meant to come into the world, if it is not meant to be birthed onto this planet, it is very likely that it is a spirit that has only needed to come into experience that particular experience, the conception process, the being in the womb process for a short period of time. These are often very highly evolved spirits. This is all they need to complete on this planet. So yes, there is often grief for the parents when this happens. But please understand, this was a very special and precious being that chose you. Help them finalize a part of their own journeys. Is that helpful? Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And do I have a question. I'd like to start out with Angela's question. She notes in the side chat that in New York, uh, next year all districts will require immunization and there will be no more religious exemptions. Uh, so I, I think she's saying that in our state there is likely not to be the loophole that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. What can you say about that? Yes. Initially, it will appear. It will appear foolproof. It's not, my friends. I can tell you that. What is going to occur? What is going to occur if you do not take your child to have these inoculations? Are they going to refuse you being part of the schooling system? 
What is wrong with homeschooling your child? If you are of the belief system that immunization is not healthy to your child, then you are dedicated. You have understood. You have sought out the answers. You can present your arguments. Be informed. Look at the countries in your planet. Look at where there is actually countries in your planet where what you call SIDS has been all but eradicated. Look for it. I'm not going to give you the answer. Look for it because I want you all to, as a collective, find this information. Seek it out. Right there is your consensus argument. No. I will not inoculate my child based on these dangers to its life. Take that to your government. If you care enough about your child, then also consider homeschooling them. That is another option. If you do decide to go ahead and immunise your children, again, if you do so with informed consent, there will be no issue. But if you feel that this particular law in this particular part of your country is going to be foolproof, no, my friends, no. If you can prove that this is not supporting your child's health with statistics that are readily available on your planet, they can't force you to do so. For essentially, you're putting your child's life in danger. You are the voice pieces to gather the information and create the movement that changes this law. It's fragile as it is. It's borderline as it is. And whether it even gets passed is going to be interesting. All right, thank you so much for that information. I'd just like to add a little something extra on that one. Here in Montana, where I live, uh, I know several families that homeschool their children. And actually, you know, a lot of people say that it's harmful because they don't get to associate with other children, but that's actually not true. All these people that are homeschooling are in a group and connected with one another. So they meet at certain times at the playgrounds, things like that, uh, plan outings, uh, hiking events, different things like that, that where they can learn about nature um, and also have interactions with other children without being in the school program. Um, it allows them to uh, concentrate on the curriculums that they feel are important along with the ones that are, you know, of course in schools normally such as math, uh, science, history, those subjects. So don't be afraid to try to homeschool your child. Um, a lot of them that I see are amazing children. They had, know so much more than the children do in the schools because their parents aren't so limiting with the information. So just an idea to consider. Go ahead, Mark. Well, I had a couple questions on a different tack. Uh, first of all, we've heard from other beings that we have an impending economic collapse to get through and I'm wondering how this new wave of bursts will be impacted uh, by a very challenging time in our history. Yes. Ironically it will actually bring hope. That is one of the reasons why this wave is ready to come through now. Why now has become the time. It has crept up and suddenly it's now. The state of your economies, yes, it's going to be disrupted. But it is up to the communities and also your own attitudes as to how much you respond. How are you going to prepare? What is going to happen afterwards? There are patterns. Earth has very distinct economical patterns. And for the way in which your economies work at the moment, you can look back over several of your decades and you will see very deliberate patterns, the rise and the fall of the value of all kinds of different precious items, currency. The children that come in at this point 
They are simply going to be educated. They are also not going to be so attached to the idea of money, currency. They will become more the kind of child who wants the exchange of energy. Let us say this child in particular enjoys growing your tomatoes and another child down the street enjoys growing the corn and you may exchange as such. This is a simple idea but I would like to encourage you all as well. Encourage your children to do these exchanges of energy ideas. They will come to also value their abilities. They will find where their aptitudes are, their passion. Where does their passion lay? This is actually going to be something that is going to support the children who are coming in because they are built differently. They are coming in knowing that whatever their intelligence unique to themselves is, is necessary for where the planet is at at, the, at at that time. It is the parents who there is more concern for. I would like to ask you, when these children are birthed, have faith that you will be provided for. Have faith. You will see that day by day you will become more resourceful. You will see the economy will recover. You will see other things become valuable. You will see change. And these children essentially are going to make a vast difference in the way you trade amongst each other. Currency will be something completely different. Service will become more valued. Does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. I have a second mm -hmm. question, and I'm wondering if this new wave of births will be large enough to add to the stress on Mother Gaia that our population poses uh, to climate and fossil fuel consumption, etc. Absolutely not. That is one reason why the new wave is coming through. These are the children that are going to cease the use of fossil fuels. They are coming in with the technology innately and they will build and create alternative forms of energy. Gaia will reco recover very quickly once these children become part of what you call your voting populace in your various countries. Laws will change, fuels will change, value of this particular fossil fuel is going to be zero. There will be no point. There will be free energy and these are the children who are going to produce it for the entire planet and this will support Gaia in her healing process. Again, effective and efficient. This wave is going to be a wonderful demonstration of this. Sounds like a double yeah. blessing then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Amrin, would you like to go? Thank you, yes. Hello, Endo. I'm so happy that you're here. Happy to have oh. back to you. I love you so Thank much. You. Well, uh, since we are talking about children, I my question is also related to that. I feel like that I, in, the fu in future I will be some kind of teacher and children are involved. And I had a dream one week ago. In my dream, I was, I was, there were many children around me and I felt like I was their guide of some kind. And these children were not humans. They were very much alien-like, like hybrid children. They were very whitish and blue in their skin. Yes. I were, that's how I saw myself. Is there mm. something? I, I'm just wondering what, what more is connected to this regarding me in the future. This was very vivid for you, wasn't it? It was, yes. Yes. My friend, you will repeat these dreams several times. You are teaching. You are teaching these beings. 
are you able to see and understand that this is actually what is going on, the importance of what you are doing? You are already teaching. You already have a class. They are hybrids. I will tell you that. I am permitted to share that much with you. But my friend, you are teaching in your dream state. It's wonderful. I'm very happy that you remember it. Trust it. Enjoy it. And give thanks. Thank you. Well, I was very happy to be, to be around them too. There were a couple of um, of other beings who were who were not children. They were not children. They were just there. But but I was I was taking care of these children, and I, and I loved them so much. It was like they were my own in, in a way. Yeah. And they were very sweet. Um, of are there, course. Yeah. Are there connections so between me and 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 all this uh, all this kind of um, colonies which are made and hybrids hybrid children? Do I have a connection with the colonies and so on? Oh. Yes, my friend, may I share this with you? On the colonies, there are all kinds of hybridizations. Now, very often. It depends on the percentage, and this is still being experimented with. It's not dangerous, but it is still being experimented with. How much DNA of the humans do we actually use within the various species that are willing to create these hybrids? Now, when you see a hybrid child that is more human-like, it has obviously a higher degree of human DNA or it is what you typically call a throwback. The DNA has simply come through stronger, it has missed a generation and it produces in this particular one. Now, this is all allowed. DNA can be manipulated at the time of conception and prior. Of course, this is something on your planet that is already known. But at the moment, the experiments are going on without intervention, as little intervention as possible to look at the results, study the results and allow spirit and Gaia, which is where they will arrive, to have their input into what will be created. So where you have these, ex these experiences, where you are obviously in a class light situation, they will be highly hybridized with other species, where you see children that in this particular situation, you find there are more human-like children that do have a close bond with you. It is very likely, I may only say this much, it is very likely that at some point you will have a high level of hybrid with a high level of human DNA. For yourself, two children. Okay. That's that's something new. I'm surprised because I know very little about myself on a spiritual base. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, yes. that's a surprise. This is the beginning. This is your beginning, my friend. Well, thank you so much. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thanks for. That is fine. Answers. Yes, and I will keep dreaming about those children and. Yes, please do. I, I hope. That that will happen someday on Earth, too. Oh yes, as do we, my friend. Thank you, Endo. Thank you. Thank you. I have another question. Um, is there a relationship between this new wave and first contact? And if you could describe that ah. relationship. Yes, very good question. Yes, absolutely. There are all kinds of first contact, my friend. These children, of course, they are going to have first contact in all kinds of ways. They're going to be very sensitive, as I said. The idea of contact with alien realms, other dimensions. Now, I also want to address that there are species that do live within the planet Gaia here. Now, they are looking to for first contact. Essentially, 
these children in this wave who are coming through are prepared for close contact, yes. And this is another reason why I say when they become to the age of voting in each of your individual countries, they are going to be the ones that do pave the way. If it has not already happened or if it is happening and it is still kept behind closed doors, these children are the ones that are going to expose it without question if it doesn't happen beforehand. The likelihood is that it's going to happen with this new wave coming through. But let us pray for the magical idea that it happens earlier. Well, that gives me, makes me think of another question. Uh, if I watch the news, I uh, don't feel encouraged about our ability to uh, connect well with ourselves as a species, much mm -hmm. less other species. Yes. What can we do as uh, light workers to make a difference in in changing, in creating the sea change of warmth and caring and openness to other differences? Yes, yes, understood. As a collective, the light workers they are awakening all the time. Even as I speak, there are awakenings happening on your planet. This is something that is going to continue. It's not at any point in the near future probability that it's going to stagnate. It will actually accelerate. I would like to also share this idea with you. When first contact is made, if they, this particular species happens to be perceived as any kind of threat to the planet and the populace, immediately there will be unification between the populace of the planet, immediately. If contact is seen as something they do not want, if there will be fear-driven chaos. So what that means essentially is that Earth is going to turn into a ruckus of fear However, what they will do is unite because they have the common denominator. While they unite and they play out their fears and these first contact beings stay put. Don't move. Give no reason to allow the fear to be spread further. They will act in such a way that eventually over time, as humans often need, over time, we'll suddenly start to think, well, we've been here for a while and nothing's happened. Why are we worrying? In the meantime, your planet is unified. This actually happens on a small scale when you have the government meetings. You have to delegate, delegate from the aliens you come and the delegates from your individual countries. Over time, the aliens have become more accepted, but they have also helped the delegates of the other countries, the other humans that are in these meetings bond between each other. They understand that they are a species of their own. Humans are a species of their own. There are things that they have common between them. Something very different for them to identify that. That is all. So on a small scale, yet a very important one, it is happening. And though it may take fear and chaos, ultimately it will turn into unification. Now these children are going to be a very stabling influence depending when this happens. If first contact happens after these children are born, they will be prepared, just as you are, just as the proportion of your populace at the moment stands in ready. As I said, this will continue to grow, it will continue to blossom, it will continue to awaken. So this is a positive, this is not something to be sad about. Celebrate it, enjoy it, and be grateful for it. This will bring more of it. 
this will bring more hearts and more minds together as oneness in unity as a very powerful collective to make massive differences on the planet. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it's very helpful to think about it in advance. Uh, patience is not easy for me and, and seeing the good that will come out of the fear will make it easier to be patient through that process. And uh, any tips on, on what we can do to make that go smoothly and uh, just to express our desire and and uh, our desire for connection and support with other races and, and mutual mutually beneficial uh, relationships. Yes. yes. Ideal for the light workers to lead with demonstration. Words are going to fall on deaf ears at a time such as this. But if you do not demonstrate fear, if you demonstrate that you embrace these beings, if you demonstrate that you want to interact with these beings, the more of you do it, you cannot not influence. Please remember that. So there will be those of you who are going to be the pioneers. You will show the way. But this is the point. It is the demonstration. It is the action. It's not the words that will make the difference. So it will also be taken into account that the species who does make first contact is going to be very aware of how many of you are open to them, open to the idea that they can make a difference on this planet. Now this has been said before. When they arrive, they will come with the intent that they will heal at some point on your planet. It appears the probability at this point that the difference will be made in the hungry on your planet. Those children who are dying from hunger. So while there is chaos and fear going on amongst the population that do not understand and have yet to embrace the idea, they are also going to be bringing very quietly as quiet achievers healing to these children who are dying of hunger. They will provide ways to give them nutrition. It will be done quietly, but slowly the light workers will become aware of it Slowly the balance will change, the fear will lessen as they see that the aliens hold humanity in high regard. What better way to present trust than to come to your planet where you all resonate so deeply with children and their health? We just spoke of immunizations. If they come to heal some children on your planet, this is going to be a wonderful way to introduce themselves. This is the likelihood. But yes, Mark, my friend, please lead by demonstration. That will be the most effective. Well, that brings up, uh, let me name one of my own fears. Uh, there are, I, I can only imagine how many species are out beyond the borders of our world and without knowing anything or without with the very little I know about other species, how do I know that we'll be protected from those species that might have agendas that would be less beneficial to us than the scenario you just discussed? Yes, yes, understood. You have an advantage. Earth has an advantage. There's many three-dimensional planets. Alma Tuck was talking with me about this. There's many three-dimensional planets that are actually going through a similar kind of ascension process at the moment. It's something that we, they are carrying through from the Great Assembly to each individual planet that is looking for first contact. That would be the most effective way that I could translate what he said. The fear factor. 
there is in place and has been for a lengthy period the desensitization project. Now those of us who are around your planet and Gertrude Nia, that those of you who are here are aware of, they are honourable beings. They do protect you. They do look out for your well-being. They do minimise damage to your planet where they can. They make a difference where they can. Now we are part of that. Those on my ship, we work closely with Gaia and the energy that we send to her to heal her. We are all here with your best interest at heart. Now, this is a twofold effect, of course. We are here looking out for you. Your governments don't always necessarily trust that that is what we are doing. However, we continually be of our word. If there is a species that does arrive and this happens, we have the ability to remove them. This is the way that they are dealt with. They are removed. They are taken from the vicinity where they may not physically, with their own technology, be able to return. Now, if the odd occasion happens where there is interference of some kind that does not serve the project, it is acted upon efficiently, quickly, made public because this is the way that you build trust, you be transparent. This is how the fear factor will be limited. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Christine, would you like to ask a question? Yes, um, I'm kind of worried about the um, beings that come here to be the first um, contact with us humans. I mean, what what's to protect them from um, crazy mm. humans? <laughs> this you, my friend. There is much to protect them. There is much. They are not coming ill-informed. They are coming with a plan. And of course they want to protect themselves, and they will, but they will be neutral. They will only be harmful if they are absolutely out of other options. Our race is one that is being considered to come because we are humanoid looking. There are all kinds of factors that are going to be part of the decision-making process of who does arrive. But obviously the less threatening the beings appear, the more embraced they are going to be. So thank you for caring about our protection. But please note that we come informed in advance. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming and visiting with us today and giving us all this valuable information. And um, now we'd like to bring Kim back if we can. Of course. Thank you. Much love, my Thank friends, you. and please leave your passion. Oh, namaste. 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 Much loving, though. Goodbye. Hi, Jaylene. This is Michelle Euro. Um, Michelle? That you had called me. Michelle? Um, <laughs> Mute here. <laughs> Hi. I don't know what's going on with Michelle. <laughs> That's okay. She just wasn't muted. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How is everybody? Very, oh, well. very well. Yes, very well. Get yourself something to drink there. I, I could tell you were starting to get thirsty. Yeah, wow. 
<laughs> and who does that? <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what are we looking at in time? Ah. Okay, yeah, we we did just about an hour there. So okay. that was a really good session. Thank are, you. Are you I'm feeling sorry. anybody else around yes. you? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Three guesses. That's <laughs> why the pink. Here so we're we doing it without the putty today, so yeah, she she wants to address this. Um she she's I know it's about children. And that's why she wants to weigh in. Sure. She's yeah. on the other side as a child and I'm yes. sure she has an awesome viewpoint that she would love to share. Yes. I'll bring my baby through. See you soon. Welcome. Yes, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Oh, awesome. It's so wonderful to see you again, Kalia. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> oh, yes, I can just imagine. Yeah, I love playing, it. <laughs> playing with your turtle. Yeah. I, I love I, turtles, I, I too. I just tell her to say hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Turtles are pretty special. I saw that one, Valerie. I saw that video. That was really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Just for you. Thank and you. And your mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just as well, mom likes them too, hey. So, hey, Kalia, what kind of things can you tell us about the children on the other side? Oh, well, in spirit, when the spirits decide that they're going to come in as human babies, human children, kind of go through a process, and it's it's like it's like innocence. It's like that pure little innocence, that pure little spirit, just going to come down, and become a baby, and. These ones, these ones that are coming through now, the ones that was just being spoken about, I want to talk to you about what to do after they're born. Just little things that you can do to help them with what it is that they've come for. So it's pretty typical now that parents think that they know what's healthy for the children and what's not. Oh, yeah, that's okay. But these children, they need to be able to decide what they prefer. And I'm talking about things like, if you're going to put a colour in their bed or a colour on their windows or their walls, Please ask them, ask them and say, use the words, use the words. Is this magical to you? Which colour is magical? Which colour makes you feel special? Use those words. When you talk about what they want to have to eat, and You've got to balance your foods, of course, but you can learn. You can learn. You can say to the children what food 
is so magical to your body? What food do you feel makes you healthy? And let them have lots of that. Because you know what? It's going to be something really healthy. But they're all different. They're all different. And they all have a big deal to understand when they get here. And this is a way that you can help to teach them. Use the words magical. Use the words special. Does this toy make you feel special? Is that why you like this toy? Because it makes you feel precious? Those words. Those words so that they understand who they are. It helps them to find what their passion is very, very early. It helps the parents to know. And these children are not going to misbehave. Because they're going to understand that they're being heard. That who they are is very special. And they matter. So they will grow up to know that they are important. And that magical things and miracles really do happen. And this is how you make them. And you're also showing them how to see the magic in other people. Because these children, they will turn around one day and they will say the exact same thing to you. They might say, Mom, why do you wear that dress? Is it because you feel magical in it? And the mum might go, Wow. That's a good question. Why do I like this? It's going to be a learning both ways like everything always is. But it's all going to make Earth a better place to be. And if you can all be that way to the children and help them to understand there are magic and miracles everywhere, they manifest and they can create. And they can show gratitude. Earth will become a magical place to be. So that's what I wanted to say. Well, thank you so much, Kalia. And they were talking about the, when the new children come in and how to ask them those questions. Should we also know more things, uh, how to take care of them? Like you said, they'll be sensitive. So do they need more hugs, more... More mm -hmm. loving, gentleness. Mm -hmm. Yes. That that is something too. To say to the children, if if they want if they want to have a cuddle, and these children are going to find that they do enjoy time alone. They're not going to be what you would call needy kinds of children. So they're going to be quite easy children. But yes, if they come to you for a cuddle or a hug or some comfort or if they fell and they hurt their knee and you can talk about give them a big hug and a big cuddle and say watch how magically your body makes that better and you can watch it every day and you can take a photo every day or something like that it's just things like before they can talk those kinds of things one thing that's really good is to put a kind of curtain, like an invisible kind of curtain on their beds and, and then have it that it's a kind of a purpley colour, a magical purpley colour, just a thin veil. And then put, put in the windows crystals and make sure that the sun comes through and shines on them and it can shine in the little magical and when they're little and they can still see auras and things very easy because what you're doing then is you're also making them aware that this is all magical too and this is amazing and this is like spirit and it's here to be amongst you all. So why do you let them do these kinds of magical things while they can't talk? 
I'm going to tell you really that they will be. Because they're going to be doing it with their heart. But if the parents aren't ready and, and they, they're not quite sure how to do that, it doesn't matter because that was the deal when they came in. But that's something. That is one thing. Make everything as magical and special as you can. Full of very happy stories of healing and love, peace. Be careful about what they see. Do what you can while you can so that when they are ready to go out into the world, their belief system is already built that they can be magnificent and so can everyone around them. And they will know it's nothing to be scared of, that what they love, it's not scary to tell the world about that. It's magical. Do you see? Well, I'm a little confused about magic. Uh, life has been presented to me in a fairly mechanistic, scientific. I always was your sweetheart. Yeah. I was your best lover. I don't know how many others you had, but I was the best. Oh, I know. <laughs> What's that? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> wow. The best lovers, huh? Don't think we should make you talk about that one. <laughs> well, I don't know where that came from, but that wasn't part of the question, that's for sure. <laughs> I think that's it wasn't we'll work on Mark's question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Oh, yeah, poor Mark. Uh, you know, having grown up in, in being taught that the world is a rather mechanistic place and things just work a certain way and that's all there is to it, uh, how can I find more magic in my life to share with uh, the children in my life? Mark, why a turtle? <laughs> turtle. <laughs> yeah. Anything like that. Do you remember something from when you were little? What did you do when you were little? What did you like? Did you play in the sand? Did you have like a sandbox and build sand castles? I did have a sandbox, but I was much more interested in climbing trees and reading fantasies like The Wizard of Oz. Ah! Have you seen The Wizard of Oz, the new one? No, I haven't. Ah! ta Magic! <laughs> Go and see it. I'll check it out. Thank you. You're welcome. Kalia, yes. I have a little. I have a little bit of a question here. Mm -hmm. um, you love turtles, and you love all the animals. Am I correct? Yes. Are there ways that we can help children that may have issues emotionally mm. and don't know how to treat children or children don't know how to treat animals correctly? Are there ways that we can teach them better? The children? Yes. And how, how to be and with how animals? They, yes, and how to be yeah. with animals in a better way. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's one thing that's a really big deal on Earth, and that's eating animals. And that can be a really tough one. I know that. The reason I can say that is because when I first got sick, my body just decided to change what I was eating. And it wasn't until we looked back that I really noticed. But I started to not want to eat, eat meat. Even in the morning at breakfast, before I went to school, I would have a salad. And I just wanted to have, I didn't even want to have bread, carbohydrates, that kind of thing. I just wanted to be eating fruit and vegetables. So 
what happened the first time that they found out finally what it was, the tumor that I had was almost all dead anyway. And that was because I was starving it. I didn't know it, but I wasn't giving it what it needed to live. Lots of sugars or you know, lots of iron or just just things like that. Red meats. And I always loved chicken. Always loved chicken. I didn't even want that. So, you know, I was allowed to make choices like that. And the children with the animals, they're all going to be different about that too. Being kind to animals, that's a different story. But whether or not you eat them, really that's up to what the body is needing at the time. And if you allow your children to choose what they eat, and if they don't choose to eat animals, then just let it be. And don't make a big deal about it and just trust that that's what their bodies want. If they do want to eat meat, then there's a reason for that too. A kindness to animals. Again, that's something to help them to understand that they also are very important. That they live on the planet and they share the planet. It might look like the humans run it, but the animals share it, just like the trees do, and just like the sun does. It's all shared. So it's a good way to tell children to care about the animals because if they understand that they are sharing, just like they would share with their brother or share with their sister, then they will be kinder and that's a good way for them to understand when they're really little and they're learning about sharing. That makes complete sense. Another part of what you were saying that I really liked was how you chose kind of what you wanted to eat when you were not feeling well um, and in that respect you were helping your body. Yep. So. So subconsciously, if we allow our children to make some of the choices about mm -hmm. their diet, it yeah. would actually be helping them more as, as long as we're overseeing that and it's not yes. uh, sugar type things. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful thing too. Um, most of the time, I, I believe and I, and I hope that I'm right on this, the colors resonate with the children so uh -huh. having a lot of different color in the food helps uh -huh. yes okay. it does okay. yes very colorful and make patterns but again do it with the child it's nice to do it as a surprise for them sometimes but it's really good to let the child do it and see what they come up with see what they create you know, sometimes when you put icing on cakes and things like that, and some people are really, really good at making these cakes, and they're amazing. But if you let a child who's big enough to be able to do it, you give them the freedom to create and see what they create. Sometimes it'll be a disaster, but that doesn't matter. Other times you might find that they come up with something that's so tasty and so healthy that it will change the diet of the whole family. These kids are going to know this stuff. They just need to be given lots and lots of opportunities. Does that help? Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that would like to have a question in? That I may have missed. Okay. Somebody wants to talk to me. Well, Somebody if nobody does, else, huh? okay, if nobody Mark, else has a question, um, what can we do for parents to uh, 
we have a, a long tradition of abusing animals for our convenience. Uh, what can we do to raise the awareness in parents so that they can uh, sort of shift the attitude that they impart to their children? Mm -hmm. That's something that, well, is if the parents are already being taught, if they've already been taught to be nasty to animals, then these particular children, when they come in, they are going to say when they're big enough that they don't like it and they will make a point of it. These children will not take on those beliefs of those parents or if they see another adult doing it. It will be partly the children's job there because if they see a dog who's being hurt by their owner or if they see a lost cat or even the animals in the wild, all of that, the hunting and the killing, no. The children are going to come up with better ways. The children are going to know, like I asked you to tell them that they're sharing the planet. Now, with adults who are just nasty about it all right now, a lot of them aren't going to be here when it's time anyway. But things have gotten so much better for the animals on your planet now that the internet is there. So, so much better. Even with television, the cameras that went, went over to Africa, and took all those studies and now they have all these special trips to safaris and places and things like that and now they're able to come up with statistics and all this is all available. People care about extinction. There's like there's like different levels to this question because there's the wild animals in the natural habitat and then there's the pet animals and they change as well. But the abuse of animals, with existing adults, a lot of them are being caught and they're being made an example of now and that never used to happen before. And what that's doing is opening up people's hearts. They're seeing it now. They're going, wow, that really happened? Oh my gosh. And then they go to their friend the next day and they say, wow, did you see that story on what happened to that dog? We talk about it. Someone might be sitting there listening and making up their mind what they think about it. And they see the other people there caring and they think, oh, wow, maybe that's true. That's one thing that's really interesting about the way that humans think about animals and they kind of they kind of define it that animals what makes up animals is that they don't dream. How many times have you seen a video that's of anyone and a dog's running in its sleep? That dog's dreaming. What are they talking about? That's, that's crazy stuff. It's crazy good. But, you know, those videos, they're all things that are making a big difference. And the internet is one of those. It's changed a lot of viewpoints of the humans. There's been a lot of accidental things that have been exposed as well. So people are very much more careful. And there is efforts being made for the farmers who do grow the animals that will be food. The other thing to remember is that when those animals come in, they're also incarnate spirit. And they know that ultimately the destiny is that they're going to be sustenance for the humans. What happens between that time is what needs to change. The cruelty, the ways that they inject them with different kinds of hormones, the diseases that get spread. Oh, 
the state some of those animals are in when they are finally put out of their misery and that's the truth and they become food. Think about that. Not only is it cruel to the animal when they're alive, but what kind of what kind of quality of food are you going to be eating if you are a meat eater and this animal has been treated that way? The energy passes through. That's why sometimes meat eaters don't necessarily they're not always very compassionate people. I want to be kind. Sometimes there's people who just say, no, all they want to eat is meat. And they're eating the bodies of animals that were very distressed. And that makes these people very distressed. It shows in their behaviour and it will show in the end in, in their health. So if you are a meat eater and there are efforts being made now that these animals that are going to be food, they still, when they are alive, are having a pleasant life. The farmers need to come to understand not just that they're providing quality meat, that they're providing meat that has been cared for and loved. That's why a long time ago, when people on planet Earth and they, like the tribes, some of them still do now. They go out and they'll kill a wild animal. A lot of times they have a ritual before they eat it. Just to make sure that they're getting all the nutrition spiritually and physically that they can. And sharing the, the meat of another being, sharing their planet. Does that help? Yes, very much. Thank you, Kalia. You're welcome. Now, if we could bring your your mother Kim back, that would be sure. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Have a oh, wonderful oh, oh. day. I will. Can we do something before I go, please? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, some of you guys will know I do this kind of stuff, right? Uh, I've got a new one for today. So I'm going to sing something. You can sing to you if you want, but the really important thing is that you do it, okay? Okay. All right. I'm going to start and we'll just do a little piece of it because it's going to be really long. But what we're going to do is we're going to go, you put your heart space in, you put your heart space out, you put your heart space in, and then what do you do? You shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn around. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Woo! <Woo>! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. That was fun. How fun, yes. <laughs> yes. So now all day you have hokey pokey going through your head. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> Hi, Tanya. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you all. Oh, we love I'll you see you too, sweetheart. Blessings, blessings. 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 Mm. Hello, Kim. Hi. Welcome back. Are you thirsty, girl? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Kalia came in to play with us for a little while. I, I figured she would make you thirsty because she was very excited today. <laughs> Kalia? Yes. <laughs> Did you find your oh, turtle yeah. there? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, she was shaking it all about. <laughs> <laughs> what? She was doing what? the hokey pokey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what did she 
You were having a lot of fun with your daughter today. <laughs> she's such a beautiful spirit. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty amazing. I actually got the chance this week uh, to channel her for my other daughter. Oh, how beautiful. And uh, it was very emotional, but uh, she she's a different girl at the moment. So... I think it was really productive and the timing was perfect and yeah, it was well, a wonderful thing. must have thing. delivered a message to her sister that was very helpful then. Mm hmm yeah. Yeah, it was actually because, I mean, Britt went off on a trip to do what she does and um, she knew how Carly was interacting with her and that kind of thing and, and she was just full of confidence and love and oh. she made the most of the time. So, um... Yeah, well, that was great. I'm, I'm really pleased she was finally up to doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. yeah. What an astonishing gift to be able to give one daughter back her sister. It's just, oh. It, it gives me goosebumps when I think about it now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, what parent wouldn't love to be able to do that, you know, when you've lost a child? It can be so devastating to a person's life. I, I can't even imagine myself having had two healthy children, but I have friends, close friends, who have mm -hmm. lost their children who were very close to me. And yeah. I can honestly say that my heart broke as much as if it was my own child. Yeah. Um, cancer is a devastating illness. And by allowing your children to eat the things that they are craving, as she was talking about, it does help them. I had that experience with my own children and allowed them to choose what they would like to eat. And as Kalia said, most of the time they do choose healthy food all on their own. Yeah. And mine did as well. I, I think that it's really important for us to remember that these children that we bring into the world are little people. They yes. do have enough wherewithal to be able to make a lot of the decisions themselves and good yes. ones and by allowing that when they're younger you produce an adult that is very confident and able to make those decisions as well mm. yeah and so, understand why they're making them too I think mm -hmm. that helps as well I mean sometimes they learn in retrospect but uh, just like we did with Carly was amazing the way that she changed her diet, but we didn't sort of question it. We didn't we didn't realize much of what was going on, and, and we put two and two together when they uh, they took a needle biopsy of her tumor, and all the all the cells were were dead, and the uh, tumor was actually an unusual shape, and it went around to this this sample they took. Um, went around to this group of people, this handful of people who are able to diagnose uh, teenage cancer cells under a microscope. I mean, it's it's so scarce that there's only a handful of people who have the education to do it. Um, and then they came back and they said, Look, there's just not enough there for us to make a diagnosis. So then they asked to do a, um, a surgical biopsy on her. And um, so they operated on her. And they actually found that there was a shard of broken bone on her pelvis and it had been floating around and they removed that. They actually managed to get some live cells. Um, they were surprised at what they found. Um, taking the bone away, she was almost pain free. Um, she'd had x-rays before that and that had never shown up until this particular surgery. So that in itself was a blessing because she didn't have to be taking these you know, mind-numbing medications um, to deal with the pain. Uh, but yeah, we kind of put two and two together at that time and thought, wow, you know, she was starving this thing. She was healing herself um, just by her food choices. This when she relapsed, 
that happened when she was overseas. She was travelling as far as part of a school tour, and she wasn't couldn't follow the regimen that she'd set for herself at home. And with some of the supplements that I was giving her, um, the antioxidants in particular, and she travelled to Seattle, and uh, she was there for four weeks. And she actually complained about the food. She actually said, you know, Mum, it's fatty and it's, you know, for her. And I was just thinking the whole time, you know, after that first experience, that's all I could think of. Um, it was all, oh, wow, you know, I, I hope everybody's strong enough at the moment to, to not create something out of this, but it did. And... Uh, when she got back, four days after she got back, I mean, she was a completely different physical being when she returned. And four days after, she just couldn't get up. She couldn't walk after she got home. And that's when um, we called the hospital and they brought her straight in and the panic button was pushed once more. And, um, it's so difficult. Where... Remission has oh. got to be the hardest thing. The the family Absolutely. I know also went through that same thing with the remission. And yeah. it's so difficult when your hopes are raised so high thinking that you've beat this horrible disease and then it comes back to haunt your family yet again. Yeah. The thing that I'm hearing the most out of what you just said was for all of us to be a little more aware, a little more picky about what is we put into our bodies, what yeah. kind of food we nourish ourselves with. You know, it used to be when you were kids, you were told you are what you eat. Well, you really are. Your your cells have a turnover rate that's pretty fast. But yes. so you you know, it's never too late to change how you choose to consume the food that you do. Absolutely. Um, it's important that you do choose the things that resonate with you. That you do mm. involve a lot of different color. We talked about the color with children, the color yeah. with adults as well. If you involve a lot of different colors in your meals, chances are you're eating right. If it's fresh, chances are you're eating right. Um, blue is tricky. They say use the colors of the rainbow, but blue yeah. can be tricky. Yeah. Because technically our eyes are designed not to look at the color blue and want to eat it. Yeah, so I it, don't it, see it, anything natural. really in the vegetables that is blue, now that you mention it. <laughs> yeah, you could look at the ocean, though. I mean, really, there's no harm in drinking seawater, ocean water, if it is a pure ocean, I guess. But then you can also look at, like, the air we breathe from the sky. I mean, for a child to say that you're breathing the blue from the sky... Um, that feels to me like that would be something to teach them how to enjoy their environment and appreciate it as part of what they consume. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the point of the blue. Yeah, take care of our air as well as we take care of the food we eat. There's all aspects, like like you were saying there. It's a, To be a healthy person, it is definitely a balance of mind, body, and spirituality. And yeah. it's a great balance. So, mm. yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah. And, uh, do you feel anyone else around today, Kim? Or are you feeling exhausted? Let us know. Oh, I could. Maybe someone else who's willing to come. Okay. Well, that's... Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. Hey, y'all. <laughs> well, hi, Clancy. How are you? Hey. 
I'm great. Valerie, is that you? Oh, it sure is. <laughs> hey, girl. You're so much fun. I love it when you come in and say hi. I love you, too. <laughs> so what's new in your world, Clancy? Any messages for us today? Uh, not really. I just saw there was an opportunity to come in, so i to come say hi. We're still busy like we always are. That's okay. Yeah? What yeah. Do you, what do you do where you're at? Uh, you I'm busy? in the medical part. I'm a colony too, so I'm doing all kinds of medicine. Because I'm human, sometimes I'm actually the guinea pig. Quite interesting. They like to joke with me about that one, but that's <laughs> alright. They can use the color of my hair whenever they like. That's easy. But yeah, I do all kinds of stuff. It's just whatever's needed at the time. I know well, most of very, it. it. must be very interesting being there as a human. Mm. Can you yeah. add, can you answer any questions today for us? Some of them, sure, I'll try. Okay. Well, Christine has a question, if you don't mind. Sure. Hi, Clancy. This is Christine. Um. I was going to ask you about my health since um, I've been um, taking uh, what I think are uh, steps against uh, um, what I was. Uh, <laughs> I, I, think you know, I think I know what you're talking about, honey. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, how is my health doing? Honey, you looked in the mirror lately. <laughs> you looking great. You looking great. You doing awesome. That's you good. Keep on what you're doing, okay? Yes. Stick with it. You're doing real well. When um, Kim and Dan um, had, um, when we had a session, I was thinking that you would come in since you're on the um, the medical. Um, the medical colony, but um, it was Dan's higher self. But um, I was looking forward to your uh, accent, your southern accent. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint you that I didn't come at that time. Those are times that I'm not really needed because you know, lots of humans are getting real up with the news about this kind of stuff. I step in if it gets really bad and there's something that I can do, sure. Uh -huh. well, I'm just going to chat, though. Just, just come and ask me. We can have chat. Well, as you said, I'm doing well. I, I feel like I'm doing well, too. That's why. But, you know, sometimes we question ourselves. So, thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, are you finished, Christine? Okay. Hello, Clancy. Hello. Nice to Who's meet this? you for the second time. I am Omran. We met. Ah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. About a month a month ago. Yes. Well, hello. Hello. I was. <clears throat> I am. I am just. Uh, I'm. I'm practicing channeling, and I practiced channeling alone yesterday. And and some uh, it many beings came through. A few beings came through, and um, the one who who came through and didn't spoke a galactic language that spoke my own language. Um, who were they? And and to what degree did I channel them purely? I mean, yeah. To what degree didn't I? Was was the information not my own? I need a little bit more detail, my friend. So, yes. are you asking about the one that came through and speaking yes. your language? Yes, yes. Just give me a moment. It's okay. Sure, sure. You were channeling, my friend, sure. So, it's. It, the reason why I am so confused and I have doubt is is because I am very much aware when I'm channeling and 
sometimes when I try to channel a galactic language, it just comes out. But when I try to talk English, speak English, or my own language, um, it it's hard. That it sometimes I I just don't talk, just standing there, and and I am very much aware of of myself when yeah. I'm channeling. Yeah, sure. So. A lot of channelers are conscious channelers. It doesn't make the men less effective. If you want to work towards a trans channeling idea, then just simply be prepared to learn how to trust yourself. Trusting yourself is a big deal when it comes to that. Take some time to understand what it feels like. To actually be absent when you are trans channeling. It takes practice for many of you. So don't be too hard on yourself. Know yeah. that you are conscious channeling. Many trans channelers start out that way. Yes. Well, Just it, trust. It, Just remember it's trust in you. I will. I will. It's it's a it's a challenge to to be to be aware and at the same time channeling another one's information. Um, yeah, it's like a third party being present. Yeah. Sure, have a party. Yeah. So the ones who came through was was my higher self and my guides, right? Initially. You mean uh, when you first started? When I channeled I'm yesterday. Sure what you're talking about, my friend. Which being? Which one? When I channeled uh, a few beings yesterday, was mm -hmm. was they were they my my one of them were my higher self, right? Yes. Ah, uh, okay, good. Well, yeah, that's what that's what I wanted to know. Thank you so much. I just want to know if I were channeling. Um, well, <laughs> or yeah. Thank you yes. so much, friends. Welcome, my friend. Keep it up, okay? I will. I will. Hello there. Okay, Noha. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, we can't hear you very well, Noha. How about now? Okay. That's better. Can you hear her? Yes. Not not very loud yet. Can you hear me? Mm, no. I can kind of hear you, know, huh? Can you yell or something? No, huh? Can you speak up at all? If not, you can type a question and we'll. Yeah, she's going to type her question, so we'll just bear with her for a second. Yes. That's great. I don't think I've met Noha. Noha hasn't been on for a while. She lives in the Middle East, and sometimes they have trouble connecting. So apparently she's having a little trouble this morning. Let me sure. pop in with a question while we're waiting, and yeah, when Noha pops up, we'll do it next. Um, I'm kind of curious if you've been in the colonies working with medical stuff. Uh, can you tell me what are some of the more surprising things you've learned and how it might impact uh, the future of, of medical care for humanity? Yeah. The surprise is that it's so simple. You will find that out. All that means is that each individual, even though they may share the same disease, it manifests in a different way within them. So taking one kind of treatment and giving it to everyone who they believe is suffering with the same disease is not always successful. And you guys know that. Your scientists have to catch up and understand that the diseases is as unique as your DNA. Once they start to treat you as individuals and holistically, it's actually very simple. And getting there, it's gonna come. You're getting there. 
that sounds confusing with so many different individual variations. That sounds more complicated to me. How does that make it more simple? <laughs> Makes it more simple when you're working with the energy signature. That helps a holistic idea. You're looking at different levels of the body, different ways it resonates, frequencies, all those things. Very easy to manipulate. It's just learning how to read them. Once you've manipulated them, then you've healed them. Really, it's that simple. It's not complicated. Will we be seeing technologies to diagnose energy signatures, or is this something people use their own intuitive abilities to do? Both, my friend. Both. At the moment, you have some very effective healers who are actually doing this kind of work already. They're using the holistic kind of medicines. The ones you know as herbs and the like. It's coming to understand which ones are the most effective. Now, it's all natural. It's all there. It's all on the planet. If you do need to tune something to support you, it's there. One of the things you got that you got that you all face and you're all up against is the fact that none of these ideas are gonna make anyone any money. That's what makes it complicated. That's why they want you to think it's complicated. It's not at all. They also need to understand that if there are fruits on one side of the planet that will heal a particular ailment in one human on the other side of the planet, then you damn well get that thing there. You don't muck around. You just go ahead and you do it. And you don't do the whole divisional boundary county stuff. It's such a waste of precious time. Cooperation is going to be one of the greatest healers on your planet. So it is actually the humans who are already making profits off the medicines that you're already taking and the ways in which you're diagnosed. That's what makes it appear complicated, but it's an illusion, my friend. It's not that complicated at all. Well, that's good news. So uh, Nirv uh, Noha has typed her question. Uh, she asks, how are her humanoid kids... Adita, Arjun, Anamika, and Aline. And then she has another one following that. Mm. One moment. They're not going to give me too much information, but they want to say... They want to say, yeah, they're doing well, and they want to send their love, which is lovely. I can't say too much more than that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Let me read her next question then. She says, yesterday she felt the presence uh, of an entity in her room. She said the energy was beautiful. She'd like to know if it was an angel or a guide and how she might interact with it. Mm -hmm. One moment. Mm. She has an angelic guide. It is one of her guides. Are they all the time? Now that the guide knows that she understands who she is, she'll experience her a little more. She'll also understand that she can ask her to come visit. That's lovely. Hmm. Yeah. Us humans, we're pretty special. So I hope that answers the question. Yes, thank you. Uh, she'll be listening later. Oh, she asks uh, if you have a name. I have a name? I, no, a name for this entity or an angelic presence. Ah, <laughs> my friend, no. 
I don't get privy to information quite that deep and that specific with the spirit realm. There's no need for it. I certainly can't share it. All right, thank you. Sam? Hi, Clancy. Hey, Sam, I know you. Yes, <laughs> we meet again. Happy How are you doing? Good, good. How about you? Great. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. I just want to follow up on the request I asked last time uh, to visit the colony. Do you know if that has been uh, um, accepted or just because I, I didn't hear nothing. I'm not aware of anything so far. <laughs> My friend. Don't tell no one. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been up there. I Just see. once. Just once. Okay. But yeah, you came up. And it was lovely. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. Please I don't, don't be concerned if you don't have any memory. It's not unusual, okay? Okay. Over time. You want to do it some more, you will begin to understand what it feels like when you do know you've been. You may not remember what you did there, but afterwards you'll feel have the sensation that maybe you've been busy or you didn't sleep well or like a friend said earlier, so to see themselves in a classroom, that kind of thing. Eventually you'll get to that point. So don't worry too much and just know that what we want is for you guys to, to remember more as well. Don't stress that you don't remember much, okay? Okay. That's probably why I don't remember most of my dream now. Ah, isn't that interesting? You know, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, the reason I wanted to go up there was to meet everybody as well as to learn and uh, some of the information as well as channeling. Um, that's what I'm, that I'm means you probably need to go to all the colonies at different times, my friend. That'll keep you real busy. We we'll, we'll love it. We we'll love to do that. Sure, that's that's what they're there for, my friend. Those of you who are willing, of course. When it's safe enough, sure, you can come on up. That's fine. That's the whole idea. Wonderful. Thank you, Clancy. You're welcome. Hello, Clancy. My name is Sharon. I don't I don't believe we've spoken before. No, hi, Sharon. Hi. Um, I have a question regarding the colonies. It do I understand correctly that it's kind of in now time, like astral time? Or what would that how would we best when, when you visit in, is that what you mean? Um, when you're visiting, when we're visiting, and also w while it's existing, like where you are now, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's astral. When you come to visit, it's astral. And we're working on the holographs. So you guys know that the ones that have been around the colony idea and human colony for a while. It's astral experience for you guys right now. Holographic will be great. And sometimes when you come up, what you're actually experiencing is actual holographs. Just depends on the purpose. Yeah, we're real time though. We're interacting with you guys using the time clock when it's needed. Do you understand that? Yes. And I also had a question regarding the now time in the colonies. Does that mean that you also have interaction with our future selves, our future children, perhaps? We have interaction in this one. In colony two, we can project what your DNA responses, what your DNA build, and what your DNA future may be, sure. I don't work with the spiritual side. That's on colony one and that's on colony four. 
If you want to be finding out more about that kind of stuff, then make the request to go and be there. Or you can find out from other places. But that is not something that I am involved with. I'm working with the physical here. Okay, can you give me some ideas of uh, what you guys eat? As you know, there's so many different races or species involved. I'm curious about meal time. Hmm. Meal time don't happen as it does for you. I eat earth foods. Sometimes I eat the foods of the other species. Because we're all fairly confined and within boundaries, you also have to take into account what affects the atmosphere around you guys. You also have to think about what is healthy for us. Because it can be very easy, just like it is down there for you, to become lazy. And not be consuming what it is that's good for us. And some of us need less, and some of us need more. Some of us fast, and some of us don't. The foods vary only in that they are plant lives of different planets. Not often is it meats, what you would call meats, substitutes for meats, sure. But you'd be surprised that it's not that unlike what humans eat. It's just that they tend to be more vegetarian than the other ones that are up here with us. I have some meat every now and again. That's just because I have a treat. That's it. So it's not all that exciting. I'm sorry. No, I'm interested. You know, I'm interested in what you're saying, so I appreciate your information. And I have one last one. Do you happen to have access to, um, like, visitations that may have occurred? Some of them, sure, especially on Colony 2. Mm -hmm. What about Earth visitations from other races or other species? An Earth visitation? You mean someone from up here come down there? Yes. Can't say too much about that one. Okay. Okay. Your answer is actually in that answer, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, Angela. Hi, Clancy. It's Angie. Ah. Hi, Angie. How are you? I'm oh, great. How are you doing, girl? I really am doing very well, thank you. Um, I just have uh, one question. Um, maybe you know the answer, or could you could get it. Um, I had somebody come here to my home last night. Um, I don't know who it is, and I was just wondering if you knew who it was or could get that information. Hmm. Just a moment. Mm. I can't say too much, Angie. All right, I, I figured I will um I will try and get the answer later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for being here today and talking. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Can someone just give Sarah my love if they're speaking with a place? Yes. Thank you. Well, I'd like to just ask a follow-up question to Sean's quickly. Uh, the uh, alien foods, I'm particularly interested if there are any unique flavors in the way of herbs and spices that we don't have on Earth. I'm really curious about that. You said there wasn't much fun or exciting, but that would sound fun and exciting to me. <laughs> I guess if you're a chef, maybe. They are similar ones. The stronger tasting ones. It's interesting. Because the things will look completely different, but they taste exactly the same. It's the texture that's important, not the taste. It's the texture that the body needs. 
I can talk to you about fiber because you all know what fiber does. Everyone, all of us, our indigestion faculties, they vary from species to species. Of course, also the waste that's dealt with individually as well. But one of the things that ain't so important for other species is taste. It's texture. So they may look at some of our earth stuff like like what you talking about. Talking about the herds. They might look at it and say, Oh and then they eat it. They find out what's in it. They find out that it's actually full of what they need and they will actually force themselves to eat it. That's the way it goes for them. It's all about texture. I don't, I don't mess much with their foods. Not something that really turned me on at any time. Uh, maybe, maybe I should, Mark. Wait the heck? You're so interested, my friend. Maybe I should. It's a good idea, really. Yeah, that's the beauty of life. We all can pick and choose the things we want to explore. Um, do you want to wrap up with a blessing for us? Uh, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> I said last time I ain't so good at it, but hey, I'll do my best again. I'll do a prayer. Mother, Father, God, your mighty creator, the source and connection of all. I ask that you come down and you may bless us with your light and shine of love, texture of embracement, fluidity of water, and the grounding of earth. May we all become one, unified in mass and in energy so that we may understand we may come together as one and be that which you wish always for us. Amen. Mm, namaste. Thank you, Clancy. Wish you let you go. I'm sure you're busy where you're at and have a lot to get done today and we appreciate the time you've taken to spend with us. You're welcome. All right. We'll Love you all. Thank you. Thank you so I'll much. I'll see y'all soon. <laughs> I hope so. Bye for now. Goodbye. Welcome back, Kim. <laughs> Thank you for bringing Clancy in for a visit. She was absolutely <laughs> fun, as usual. <laughs> I <think> so <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> you might get a refreshment again, and um, I'll do a blessing, and then if anyone else wants to do one, they're welcome to do one, too. And um, we'll... Uh, have Mark take over with anything that might be coming up, and we'll call it a day. Is that sound okay with you? Absolutely. Okay. All right. I'd just like to say to Source, Creator, Mother, Father, God, bless us all this day as we move through our lives. Please help us to be mindful in the ways that we conduct ourselves with each other, with nature, with everything around us. Remember to care for the earth as if she were your sister, mother, brother, father, whatever you feel close to, whoever you feel close to. Without earth, we do not exist. Without any little link 
like the bees. We do not exist. We must all be caretakers of this beautiful world that we are connected to. Bless you all. Well, thank you. Is there anyone thank else you, who would like to uh, yes, do a I blessing do today? One. I will do one. So. Please. If to no kuru stuma it la na castia repesto of lama calist nicalesta a plea and to uplosh tum a clea are lecamatishum na opulos to for oleama ha alicanasar estum na e. If the lazur uclum to ocean na e pal amna a hor nushuko to e lapash astama ir lapa ush no colupov a clima saf na o ho lamashism na ekla. Astinil for Mkshna Pleasta Pur Amni Ip Akleasta. Thank you all. Much gratitude, appreciation, and love. Please be Thank you. Of God and love. Namaste. 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 Anyone else? Well, I think Mark might want to say a few words and I also want to thank everyone for joining us, but Mark, go ahead. Well, Valerie, I especially want to thank you for all that you're doing to help coordinate this. And Kim, of course, <laughs> really, we couldn't do this without you. Uh, as far as announcements, I think Jim is probably going to be coming back next week, but stay tuned. Uh, I'll be talking to him in the next few days, and we'll get uh, the thing posted in the usual places. And thank everybody for your questions and your participation and attention. And for all those who watch afterwards, uh, thank you, too. And I think that covers it. If I forgot anything, Val, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> I think you pretty well got it. <laughs> we appreciate everybody showing up today, everybody that watched, especially, yes, Kim. You are amazing. All the beings that you brought in are amazing. We appreciate each and every one of them, the time that they came in, the information they brought us. It is so valuable. I can't uh, express enough what it means to us that you take your time and bring us this information. And uh, we wish the best for you. And as always, it was wonderful to hear from your daughter, Kalia. <laughs> she, she is a very, very special being that you brought into this world for us to know, to appreciate. And now we get to talk to her on the other side and she has so much valuable information for us about children how to raise them how to care for them how to keep them well we appreciate her every time you bring her in so thank you again Kim you're welcome it's okay then we will see you next week thank you namaste bye thank you everyone bye thank you thank you bye and thank you have a great uh, sleep. <laughs> Bye, Kim. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Please put the live button.